In this blog, I want to cover some of the basics of the, I'm saying new SharePoint brand center very carefully, because technically it started launching from April last year. So if I go to the Microsoft 365 roadmap, you will see searching for brand center that many of these actually started rolling out from April 24 already. So check out the uh, Microsoft 365 roadmap, go and look at the um, brand center and just take a look at some of the updates that's been pushed out. So what is the purpose of the brand center? Now, of course, the brand center is gonna allow for us to in a central location on SharePoint, make um, brand fonts, brand colors, and brand assets available, okay? So it's going to make it much easier to manage those type of things across your tenant and across your various SharePoint sites. So I will not be covering um, the colors or themes or even the fonts in this session. Um, I think I'll definitely cover that in another one. For this video, I'd like to cover the deployment thereof. So setting up your brand center, making sure that it's available in all the SharePoint sites, okay? And we'll definitely take a look at uh, the new way of deploying themes. We've been doing it with PowerShell for eons, and apparently it's a lot easier now. So let's take a look at the brand center. Now, the first thing that I have to do is to actually build the brand center. Um, if I go to my SharePoint um, homepage and I click on Create Site, I then have the ability to actually choose the communication site and you'll see there is Brand Central. So I can choose the Brand Central. So this is the wonderful new site that I can use for my brand assets. I'm going to say use this template and I'm going to call this the TGS Brand Center. There we go, TGS Brand Center. Next, I'm happy with English and let's just deploy this. And there you can see the brand new um, brand center. But remember, it's just a template that's been used, right? So you've got to configure this to work the way that you want um, to use it. So it's got buttons and links and things. You have to still go and build this out. It just makes it easier for us. So link your CI brand here or your style guide. And then um, you can definitely start using the site to then also um, host your brands and your assets, of course. So let's go and look at the site contents. I just want to see what's uh, built in the background. And let's take a look. So there is branding files, documents, forms, templates, site assets, and uh, etc. So branding files, there we go. Advertising guidance, email templates, event assets, presentation templates, social media assets. Interesting. So there is a standard structure that we can use to then make these assets available. Now, what do I have to do next? Because let's take a look at where I want to use this. So let's say, for example, on one of my SharePoint sites, I actually want to add a banner, but something that's been designed for us to use across all our sites. So let me click there on Browse Images, and then you'll see that it actually gives me the ability to look at stock images, web search, my OneDrive site, upload from link. There's no organizational assets here. So we have to do another configuration before I can actually see that brand center. Let's take a look at what we should do next. So the site's been built, number one. The second thing that I have to do is that I actually need to apply permissions to the site. Okay, so I'm going to go settings. I'm going to go site permissions. I'm going to use the advanced permissions. And then the best way to do this is to go into the visitors group and to add the everyone except external users. So everyone except external users. Okay, uh, make a note of not sending an email. Okay, so don't send the email, but add the everyone except external users. So that's the second thing I have to do. Build the SharePoint site collection um, with a comms template. Well, you can use a Teams one as well, but preferably build the one with a comms template. Secondly, add permissions to this brand center. Now, um, in this example, I've actually built the brand center from scratch, but you don't have to. If there's already a SharePoint site collection that is built where these things are hosted, you can actually identify that as the brand center, okay? So now, um, the third thing we have to do is to obviously now go and add um, whatever content it is that we want to <laughs> add. So, um, any images, etc. 
Cool. So now I have also created the library that I will use. So you'll see there I've created a library called TGS Assets. I know that there's a branding files one, but I actually prefer to create my own. So TGS Assets. I did create it with a clean URL, so just assets, no um, space or anything, and then I just renamed it to TGS Assets. And then also in the site assets, I've loaded a thumbnail, a square thumbnail that will be used when users navigate to these assets. So firstly, I created the site. Secondly, I gave permissions to everyone except um, external users in the visitors group. Third, I created the brand assets library that I want to use. And fourth, I've now uploaded the thumbnail that I want to use when users navigate to that. Now we have to um, use some PowerShell to actually set this library as the one that I see in the sites when I navigate to organizational assets. So I'm going to use the latest version of a SharePoint online management shell and then I have to connect to my tenant. So you need to have SharePoint, at least SharePoint administrator role um, or global admin, of course. Cool, connected. Okay, so let's run that command that I prepared. There we go. So now we want to set that library to be an organizational asset library. So it's going to ask you to confirm um, that um, you want to add a new tenant CDN. And just to remind you, the article that I will share with you actually shares some details about this content delivery network. So just have a read up about that. And uh, I'm going to say yes. And then document library added successfully. Whoop. How easy was that? Now it will take a little bit of time for all of this to be deployed. Okay, so let's just see, of course, if you have a lot of SharePoint sites, it might take some time for it to roll out to all of them. Okay, so even though they say it can take up to 24 hours, and I've even seen mentions of 30 hours for um, the organizational assets to show, mine started showing within 15 minutes, and it, uh, it won't instantly show across all your site collections, but it'll start popping up everywhere. So I definitely would rather deploy this on a Friday evening and then you know that by Monday all the sites have the assets okay so if I look at this uh, site of mine I'm going to just modify um, the page and uh, let's just put a title in there <laughs> department and um, if I now go and look at browse images see what's new so look at that your organization that was not there before so this is an additional um, library that's been made available. There is my beautiful painting icon. And uh, if I now navigate to the library, I will see my set of folders. So if I go to my brand center, let's just refresh this so I can see my content. So in site contents, that library that I created, TGS Assets, um, I've copied my standard set of folders in there that I normally put org assets in. Okay, so going back to this department, there you can see that uh, same list of folders. So there you go. I'm actually looking at another site um, from here. I'm looking at the brand center and I can now go and find my full width page banner. So let's find a nice uh, banner that we can use. And of course, um, as with banners in this example, I can also set focus points. So it's a very, very, very great idea um, to deploy these. And of course, also remember in that same library, I can then um, make photo, a video gallery, etc., available for my employees to use. So that's a wonderful way to make assets available across the whole tenant. Um, in the next videos, I think I'll go a bit into the fonts and the other options of uh, using this brand center as well but relatively easy i must admit wasn't difficult at all i will share the urls to the resources as well as the code that uh, or the powershell that was used um, to run that script